Right, well, team, we will uh, bring ourselves back to order, slowly. Um, now, Council... Oh, she's here. <coughs> Kirk told me she's going to be a little bit late, but never mind, she is not late. Uh, Councillor Downer, AWOL, and Councillor Henderson, but we'll carry on. They shouldn't be too far away. Probably on the phone doing good Councillor business as they should. Right. Moving to agenda item number 11, which is the Rangitiki River Management Framework. Basically, this uh, item is, uh, if we pass the resolution on the next page, is about allowing Environment Bay of Plenty to virtually be um, uh, act on our behalf and, and, and to speak on the uh, issues. But, uh, Ms McLeod, you might like to give the councillors a little bit of an overview about uh, this agenda item. Yep, uh, just to, it's, it's actually the Rangitaiki River, which is, um, and uh, that is that's part of our camp catchment rather than the Rangitaiki. Um, well, I call it Rangitaiki because I think it's a better river than theirs. Okay. We all know it's just out here. As Council will be aware, there are a number of um, treaty settlements that have been entered into around uh, the management of rivers. <coughs> um, this is one that's, that's happening to the east of our, of our district. Um, and uh, basically it's um, what's being proposed here is that a joint committee will be set up underneath both Environment Bay of Plenty and um, Trokotani District Council. And that joint committee, uh, along with the, the iwi who are settling with the Crown will be involved in the, in the management of the Rangitaiki um, River. Now we ha essentially, because the, the river is also in our district, um, there is a place for us on that, that uh, committee um, but given the likelihood of, of the level of our involvement there's a suggestion that perhaps um, Environment Bay of Plenty could actually better or be, represent our interests there and report back to us in terms of any matters that um, needs our, need our attention. So this item is um, enabling that to happen. Okay, any questions for uh, Councillor Dannard? Yeah, Mr Chairman, um, has the opportunity or does the opportunity go to the hapu that are around that um, certain area that they be involved? Um, that's, my understanding is that, that that's who is re represented here through the, through the Treaty Settlement Partners. Um, so the, so you've got um, uh, Nati Manawa and um, and, and Nati Fori who are who are there, and that's so they are, they are representing the interests of, of those in that area. I think it's basically covered in the event of the attachment on 11 bar two, Nati Fori and Nati Manawa. So the Rangitaiki River, Council Ms. McLeod, what um, um, you, it says that this item does not trigger the council's significant policy, so I'm taking it that the financial and legal considerations would not be are not um, expected to be to be um, uh, too, too heavy on this, on this council if we're not there to we do not have somebody um, uh, who's a, um, a representative and, and we give uh, but we certainly don't know at this stage if there are, there may be financial implications as a consequence of this. Um, it's like, um, it's like, for example, the um, the Waikato River, where um, there is uh, obviously one of the things that is of concern is around the health of that river. Um, now we're. Uh, the, the point about having Environment Bay of Plenty represent our interests is that they also have a responsibility to report back to us. So obviously if there were implications, then that that's, provides a conduit for that to actually happen through. Now, why it doesn't um, trigger our significance policy um, is that um, at this stage, uh, certainly it doesn't trigger the threshold criteria, which is around um, the amount of, uh, amount of um, money that doesn't, it's not a significant amount of money that's, that's potentially involved here, um, and it's not an item of um, high community interest or controversy, so it's not something that would, we would necessarily need to take further in terms of going out and, and asking the public as to what they think about this matter. Well, I guess my, my, my question really is that um, if something, that something comes up, um, 
about the globe in, in, in we as a council have an opportunity to um, present it as part of this process. And certainly that's that's part of that resolution, that suggested resolution there, um, that was an agreed session of reporting to council. All right, any further? Mm-hmm. Very small part of the river goes through our actual yeah, district. It's just the source of it really, isn't it? Yeah. We, I think the staff had just seen that Environment Bay of Plenty has um, uh, much more jurisdiction over rivers and whatnot than we do, much more expertise than we do. The only downside really, as it says here, is that they do not protect the interest of the Tampa District ratepayers. Well, that's highly unlikely that um, uh, they wouldn't do that. However, like all things in life, there's always risks, but um, uh, a significance policy just means that there's... Um, by making a resolution here today, you're not um, changing anything that might be in our annual plan or our LTT plan or anything like that. Oh. So if you were to make a resolution, just as you, I'm just trying to, because I know I was due three years ago and probably still new for that matter, but um, significance policy, if you made a resolution today that meant you, we were spending half a million dollars on something, you have, you have significantly changed that annual plan and the long-term council plan, you've, uh, you've changed, made, might have changed policies and done all sorts of things. So there's a significance there, but this has no significance on any of our existing policy plans, etc. I would say as well that the staff involved from Bay of Plenty uh, perspective, they're very capable, very trustworthy people, do a lot of this sort of work all of the time. And it's a case of using the available resource that we have region-wide to do the job that they're capable of doing without committing our resources to it, uh, because they will be reported back to us anyway. So it's, it's avoiding <coughs> duplication, really. Okay, so there is a suggested resolution there, unless anybody wants to talk uh, against it or suggest, suggest uh, representing ourselves or suggesting anything other than this resolution. I think we should move on, and I will ask for a mover to the resolution on page 11 bar 1. Councillor Williams, seconded by Councillor Crate. All those in favour? Right. Carried. Thank you very much. We are now moving to agenda item number 12, which we've workshopped before. Expenses, benefits and allowances for elected members. Ms Gilbert, do you want to... Uh, I'll, I'll handle oh, Mr Van Hennen. Hey, Rick. Um, OK. We'll take it as rare because it's already been worked through. Just one comment. On the front page of the... Um, Expenses, benefit, and allowances for members only policy. Um, if you could change the draft to Council 10 December 2010 to effective 26 October 2010, because you're going to have a policy, you need to have an effective date, not just a draft. And um, you'll see we've got a suggested resolution there, which is very much the status quo, because that seemed to be the feeling from the workshops and um, council discussions we've had so far. Okay, so we were given options at workshops and whatnot uh, about lump sum payments, etc., etc. If I'm remembering rightly, most people, unless you want to re- readdress it, wanted to stay with the status quo. So I'll open the floor up for discussion. There being none, I will ask for a mover of the suggested resolution of A. Uh, which is A, adopts a status quo policy noting the updated language on benefits options as, as, as read down here. So, oh, sorry? Approved attached draft. Yeah, okay, A and B. So we need the suggested resolution that Council A and B is moved by Councillor Hickling, seconded by Councillor Mincher. All those in favour? All right. Carried. Thank you very much. For the benefit of anybody who may or may not be watching webcam, this uh, that agenda item, although it seems it went through very quickly without uh, councillor input, let me uh, in, uh, enlighten you all to this was a workshop uh, issue that's probably had a good couple of hours of input from councillors before the decision uh, was made here today. So it hasn't been taken as lightly as it looks. It uh, has been workshop well and truly. Uh, so moving now, please, to agenda item number 13. Remuneration of elected members. Now, we will talk to this because, as was mentioned earlier in the TT Turingi Tongariro um, uh, Community Board minutes, um, they had some, they want to have some more input into it. 
Um, so uh, we'll start with Councillor Kepper, please. Yeah, I just want to point you back to the um, TT minutes, which state the reasons for the board. What page are we going back to the um, uh, Councillor Kepper? Would you just bring up? Can you bring that page back up, mate, please? I think it was agenda item number three. Agenda item number three, and it's page three, bar seven. So if we ref uh, Councillor Kepp is reserve, uh, referring back to the resolution uh, after lengthy discussion at the Turangi Board regards remuneration. So that's page three, bar seven. Councillor Kepp. Yeah, which, which simply states that the board had the same workload as the previous board. That's the new board. The board was elected to represent the community. A reduction in salary devalues the role of the board members as the elected re representatives. Mm. And the fourth one, which was an interesting one, the information provided to candidates at pre-election did not indicate that the remuneration would be reduced from 10000 to 8000 So um, that's simply uh, the, the board's view. Um, in this day and age, it's unusual to have such a, a, a pay cut, if you like, on that basis. And um, <coughs> they're simply asking for a return to to the $10,000, uh, which means a reduction in the councillor remuneration. And they've asked also uh, that this issue be put before the remuneration board uh, should council decide not to run. <coughs> with the stasis quo as such. Okay, well, there's a couple of points there. We'll do the last one first. Um, you can refer it back to the remuneration board and they will simply put a stamp on it and send it back again. The decision uh, is made by council. You are governance. What your remuneration board does is it gives you a pot of money. Uh, it's up to you to uh, carve it up how you see fit. Um, however, so that, that, that's one issue. However, um, you know, I think there's some very pertinent points there that have been made by the um, community board. Um, so let's just have a look at it. If we go to page 13, bar 1, uh, there's, um, there's the original which we uh, workshopped and talked about at the top of the page, which puts the community board members at uh, 8,000 a year, 25.8% of the councillor. Um, and there's been a rework uh, down the page that if we were to look favourably at it, that's how the new um, <coughs> the new matrix would work. But I'll, I'll open it up and I'll go Councillor Mincha and then uh, Councillor Truman. Yeah, just number four there, Gary, um, information provided candidates before the election. So, so different than ourselves, I wasn't aware of how much I'd be paid, how negotiable it was going to be. So I, I think just um, there was no guarantee of exactly how much someone was going to earn before we all went for election. Uh, no, except to say that uh, it was in the, um, the information um, booklet for uh, intended um, uh, candidates. The salaries were in that booklet. Uh, 